Join me again in this response of greeting this morning. God of relentless grace, we rejoice in your saving ways. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Snohomish Ned Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Janelle Kurtz leading us as well in worship. Jim Balm and Tom Lafferty leading our music. Pat Dodson will help us to hear the word of God this morning as our liturgist. And again, it is the work of all of us combined that is worship and praise before God this day. My friends, there are a number of announcements that have been that were on the screen as you were uh, gathering in worship, and they are highlighted as well in the insert in the bulletin. It's Holy Week ahead of us, and so I'm going to highlight uh, our Holy Week worship in this time. On Thursday evening at seven o'clock in this space, we will gather, our choir will be singing as well, and we will have a Monday Thursday service, a time of remembering Jesus at the Last Supper and his instruction to his disciples the night before he's betrayed. On Friday, Good Friday, from 11 to 1 p 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., in those two hours, there are drop-in stations that are going to be set up around the building. There are six stations and there will be instructions at every station. They're gonna start in fellowship hall and end in the sanctuary, but there'll be instruction for all of it. But I invite you to come to that as you're able. If you're not able to come during that time, most of the stations can be adapted and can be sent to you so that you could do them where you are. But if you are gonna to come to sunrise service at 7 a.m. on Easter, some of you are like, oh, I don't know about that and that's okay. If you are planning to come, we're going to be outside, weather permitting, and we're going to try really hard to be outside. But I especially invite you, if you're going to come to that service, that service and its format is connected to the stations of Good Friday. So I would invite you to do those together. I think they'll be most meaningful that way. And then we will gather for our time at this time, 10 a.m. on Sunday for worship together. There will be fellowship and an egg hunt following a lot to come this week. And I invite you to join and participate in all the ways that you are able in this holy week of the year. But now my friends, I invite you in this space to join again in whatever way is best for you to worship God. I invite you to rise and body our spirit for our call to worship. Good morning. In this Lenten season, we come with hearts ready to worship and pray, to study and fast, to confess, repent, and be remade. Through it all, we are met with God's relentless grace. Today, we join the crowd in glad rejoicing. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called to the Lord. The Lord answered me. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? Yes, yes it, is it is better, better to, take to take refuge in the Lord, Lord than to trust any human leader. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The Lord is God. We have shined a light on us. So lead the festival offering, process with branches all the way to the horn of the altar. This, this is, is the day, day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate it. We join now in our opening song, Hosanna, Lord, loud Hosanna, number 278 in the hymnal and on the screen. Let us sing together. There will also be a procession of palms and all young and young at heart are asked to come to the back of the sanctuary to join in the procession. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Holy God, on this Palm Sunday, we join the ancient crowd in anticipation, waiting, watching for the one who is mighty to save. We echo their refrain, crying, Hosanna, save us. There are still so many circumstances that leave us calling out in need of redemption. There are still so many empty promises of solutions and saviors who have failed us. In the midst of distraction and desperation, remind us today to turn our cries, our hopes, our expectations to you, for you are the one who saves. You are the one who recreates. You are the one whose love makes whole. We want to be people who cry out to you and point others to your living presence. We pray, help us, save us. Hosanna. Amen. You may be seated. And would our children come forward for their time together, please? And you can bring your branches with you. By the way, so much fun, that procession. Thanks for all who joined in and all who joined from where they were. I turned around and there are more who have appeared. Good morning. Okay, well, yeah, that's true. How are you all doing today? Good. Is there anything different about today? We have the branches. I mean, that is kind of exactly what I was going for. We don't normally have branches? No, not usually. You are right about that. What, why do you think we have branches? Because it's Palm Sunday. So does that, that's okay, that's all right. It's called Palm Sunday. Does that mean this is the day we get to all go to, on vacation to someplace that has palm trees? Oh, yes, let's go to Hawaii again. Oh, Hawaii again. I know, you just got back, huh? Well, that is not why it's called Palm Sunday. I was looking, I couldn't remember if this story was in this Bible. It doesn't seem to be. So we're gonna talk about why we do Palm Sunday. You're wearing green like the palm. You really, you got, you did, was that by coincidence or you knew? Not a coincidence. 
That's coincidence. Well, it's a good one. My friends, we have these palms. And on Palm Sunday, it's the day that leads us into what we call Holy Week. You know what Holy Week is? It's okay if the answer is no. The answer can be no. So Holy Week is the week that leads up to Jesus when he dies and then is resurrected on Easter, when he lives again on Easter. It's this big miracle story that's at the very, very, very heart of what we believe as people who come to church, as Christians, as people of God. And so Holy Week are the stories and the days that lead up to that. And so it begins, we begin with Palm Sunday, and it's a day when in the story in the, in the Bible, Jesus is entering the city of Jerusalem. That was the place where people would come, and that's where they would do all their greatest worship. It was when they would come for their special holidays, they would come to Jerusalem to worship. And they were coming for Passover, which was a time that remembered that God does really good things and saved the people when they were slaves in Egypt and set them free. That's the story. And so the people would come with celebration, and they would all come for a big festival to Jerusalem. Palm Sunday tells us the story of when Jesus came, too, for that. And when he came, what do you, you went, oh, do you remember something about the story? Yeah. What do you remember about it, Maria? They, they put palm branches down. And palm branches were something that they had nearby that they could find. So that's one of the reasons why we have it. That was something they could find where they were to celebrate. And they used it as a symbol of liberation, freedom, being set free. That was part of the story. And so when Jesus came and they waved their palm branches and threw them on the ground before Jesus, they were saying, I believe you, Jesus, can be the one who can help us again. It's kind of like their version of confetti. Kind of like their version of confetti. I love it. It is a joyful, it was a joyful time. It was a remember, a time to remember, a time to celebrate what God does. Yeah, I like it, like their version of confetti. And so they said, you're the one who gets our confetti. You're the one who gets our palm branches. There are lots of people trying to lead and rule. They're not doing it in a way that brings more goodness to everyone. Maybe they're leading in such a way that it's not always fair. And the people are saying, Hosanna, which means save us, help us, and also we believe you can help us. And they're saying, there are still some things we need some help. Maybe you have some things in your mind that there are ways that you sometimes need help. I know there are things that I need help with. Sometimes there are things I see in the, on the news that make me say, Hosanna, help us. And I see things on the news. And we remember that Jesus is the one we trust who can do that. Jesus is the one that we celebrate when he comes and his way of being in the world takes over. That's what Palm Sunday is about. So what I'm going to invite you to do is we need to lay our palm branches down by the altar to remind us that that's what the folks did. So will you come and follow me? We're going to do it up there so that when we come for communion, no one slips on it. Let's come up to so this altar. Not, I it and then like, ah! Exactly. We don't want that. We're going to go up to here. This way, the only person who has to be careful is the usher. All right. So let's say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Save us. Rosie, do you want to come too? Okay, that's all right. Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah, thanks. We, we put them down there, and we do this before the altar, a place that we remember that we light the candles for God's presence. Why the are Christ those candles. ones in the vase, and then we put these on the ground? These ones are in the vase mostly as a decoration so we could see it. That's what it's for. But these ones are on the ground to remind us that's what the people did as a way of welcoming Jesus. So let's go back over by Rosie, and let's say a prayer. All right, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for being God who is powerful, who can help us when we need it most. Thank you for sending Jesus, who shows us how to lead by loving others and healing others and serving others. 
that is a good example for us. Help us to turn to you always. Amen. Thank you so much, my friends. So for communion today, I'm in, you're invited to stay in worship, and then we'll have communion later together, okay? All right. Let's see, put our chairs back. And now Pat is going to read you the story that they didn't have a version of in here. So we'll get to listen to that one. Today's scripture reading tells the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem at the time of Passover. This was a time of celebration for the saving work God has done for Israel. It was also a time of expectation for salvation to come again. Beginning today and throughout this Holy Week, Jesus will fulfill this expectation in a most unexpected manner. Hear this story as told in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples the task. He said to them, go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied up and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that their master needs them. He sent them off right away. Now this happened to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the donkey's offspring. The disciples went and did it just as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them. Then he sat on them. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road Others cut palm branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Who is this, they asked. The crowds answered, it is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. These are the holy words of the gospel for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Earlier this week, I was sitting at home in the living room when Kevin leaned over and showed me a news story he had seen. It was the story of an eagle at a wildlife sanctuary in St. Louis. This eagle's name is Murphy, and he had somehow gone viral for what he was doing. And what Murphy, the bald eagle, was doing was building a great big nest on the ground and very fiercely, very tenderly, incubating a rock. Some of you heard the story. Not an egg, a rock. There it was, this big, grand, bald eagle, the symbol of our nation. Do with that what you will. Palm Sunday is nothing if not political. There he was building his nest around a rock, pouring all his energy, all his ferocity, all his might, and just thinking this rock will bring forth life. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the work of bringing forth hope, carrying hope in the world, bringing, bearing new life in the world, this is good. This is holy work. The instinct to do this is good. It is holy, this instinct. The problem, of course, for Murphy is that he had poured all his energies into a rock and not an egg. Poor Murphy is never going to get what hope he might have, no hoped-for outcome from the rock. 
All his good, holy instincts have been misplaced, misguided. Well, I was thinking about Murphy and his rock this week, how he'll never get the promise he hopes for from it. And for one thing, I began to feel sad because I'm the kind of person who will empathize and feel sad with an eagle. But at the same time, that sadness began to invite me also into some self-reflection. I began to wonder about the habits and the energies of my life, whether there are any that have been misguided, whether there are any that I have directed wholeheartedly into a rock, thinking it would be an egg promising new life. I wondered if there are ways in which I have invested myself into things thinking they can promise new life when they just can't because they're stones and not eggs. I told you Palm Sunday is nothing if not political, and so I began to wonder if there are ways we in society have invested all good energy, good holy instincts of new life, into systems that cannot possibly bring that promise forth. This Lenten season as a whole, it confronts us with questions like this. It invites us into the introspective work of self-examination. And Holy Week brings those questions right back to the center with the cries, Hosanna, save us. It brings it right back to center. Hosanna to the son of David. Save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This refrain that greeted Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem that we take up as our own still today, it is a cry of confidence and desperation together. It is a cry for help couched in the assurance that help is indeed on its way. It is a cry that declares, no matter how long the incubation period is, no matter how demanding it is, we trust new life waits on the other side. Hosanna, save us. If you're well familiar with this story, with the rhythm of the Christian ear, these words may come naturally to you. As soon as you walked in and saw the palms, you probably knew it. The words come, they spring to our lips by memory. In the exact same way, the psalm these words are taken from, the crowd who greets Jesus, they would have come, the words to their lips by memory. The question is not so much, do we know the words, Hosanna, save us, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The question is not, do we know the words, it's to whom do we direct them today? And whom do we rejoice when we see them coming? To whom do we direct our cries for help and the confidence that they will be answered? Hosanna, save us. Are we investing our energies, our passions, our proclamation, our witness into lifeless stones? Or into promises that can bear new life like an egg? Remember, Jesus was not the only one entering Jerusalem that day. There were lots of people entering Jerusalem for the festival. They were coming to celebrate their palm branches like confetti, like a red carpet welcoming folks. Many pilgrims, many rabbis, many religious leaders, the Roman authorities too, entering into Jerusalem. Jesus, humble, riding a donkey, is not the only one. We can imagine, and we have imagined in this story in the past, we can imagine the Roman officials riding in with their processions. They don't look a lot like Jesus on a humble donkey. Their processions coming all pomp and circumstance and might, an armed guard to escort them. 
They are there simply for the purpose of making sure this festival doesn't get out of hand. And if it does, ready to respond. The crowd of people have their choice on that day. They could go, they could line the streets, they could sing praises and rejoice at the coming of Pilate in the full power and all that he represents. They could go throw down their coats. They could rejoice in worship and service before him. They could declare their allegiance to the power of might that he represents. Perhaps that might made very little choice for them. Maybe the consequences made it clear that allegiance to this authority was the only reasonable choice to make if you so value your life. And yet... And yet the crowds turn and throw down their branches for Jesus. Perhaps it is desperation that throws them, thrusts them before Jesus that turns them away. But they throw down their coats, their cloaks, their palm branches for the one who heals, for the teacher the prophet, the Messiah, the Son of God. They get their symbols. They turn to the trees and start chopping branches, which, by the way, when we were coming up, Sasha said, that's not nice to the trees. They took that risk because it was a symbol of liberation, the full embodiment of their hope. And they threw them down before Jesus riding his donkey. They raise their voices in an ancient song that blends praise and assurance with a cry for help. Confident help is coming. And in doing this, they ascribe to Jesus all their hope for a Messiah, all their hope for a Savior, all their hope for deliverance, all their hope for new life is put on Jesus riding the donkey. Not the conqueror who proclaimed power, riding the war horse, but Jesus riding his humble donkey. The hope they remembered at the Passover, the celebration they have at the Passover, it is all transferred to Jesus. He is the one to embody the saving, liberating work of God, Once the same work God once wrought for the people of Israel. At Passover, the Jewish community, they recall how God brought the people out of slavery in Egypt, freed them from Pharaoh's hard-heartedness, from Pharaoh's might. And now, in this cry, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, Jesus is the one who is expected to bring that hope, that same saving work for another generation another generation of Israel crying out. Jesus will be the one to fulfill the prophecy of liberation, of salvation. He is the hope for setting the people free from Roman rule and all the powers of conquest and control and might that they represent. So the people cry, Hosanna to the Son of David. Save us. Blessed are you who come. In the name of the Lord. With these words, the people have chosen the one in whom they will rejoice when he comes. Even amidst circumstances when they might not have had much agency at all, the people make their choice. The one in whom they will entrust themselves for salvation, for liberation, for new life, the one under whose wings they will seek refuge. And that one is Jesus, rabbi, healer, prophet, Messiah, son of God, son of David, the good egg that promises new life. My friends, we have the words of hope and assurance, of confident rejoicing even in the midst of crying out. And my friends, there is crying out. Is there not still crying out? What I didn't tell you is that Kevin leaned over and showed me this story about Murphy. 
And I'm pretty sure he was doing it to try and get my mind even for a second off of what happened in Nashville this week. Is there not still crying out? The scriptures have given us words of hope, of assurance, when our desperate cries need to find space to echo. But the question is still for us to determine to whom will we direct these cries? To whom will we direct our rejoicing, our praise? To who, to what will we seek our help and our salvation? Because though they have different names and different guises today, the ways of Pharaoh, the ways of Pilate, they live on. The hard-hearted way of conquest and competition, of greed and exploitation, of power and privilege, that they still glisten, they still gleam around us like shiny rocks duping us into building our nests around them taking all our good, holy instincts of new life and pouring them in to those things as if they can deliver the promise we seek. To be fair, my friends, it is always, I think, always easier to recognize in hindsight than it is in the moment. Which is why Lent invites us into the practice of self-examination, because our choices cannot wait for hindsight. Our choices come now. And so we're invited into the self-reflective, self-examination work now, so that we can hopefully make the choices that will lead to nurturing life, that will lead to putting all our hope into eggs instead of rocks. And here, my brothers and sisters, is the good news of the gospel for us this day. Are you ready for it? The good news is that we worship a God who can somehow bring forth new life out of both the rock and the egg. I don't know how, it's that mystery and miracle beyond our understanding, but that God, the God we worship, can somehow bring forth new life even out of both. For that God who set the people free, the Israelites free, is the same God that when those Israelites wandered in the wilderness and got thirsty, brought water from a rock. And we are heading into Holy Week, and where does Holy Week lead us next week? We come and we will celebrate Easter. Now, if that is not a story of God bringing new life from a rock, a tomb, I don't know what is. My friends, the good news is that is the God we worship. A God who, even when we are as misguided as poor Murphy Bird, and how we steward our instincts and our intentions, even when we are that misguided, God can bring forth redemption and new life even then. Salvation, liberation, hope, even there. New life from rocks, new life from eggs alike. God is up to it. That's who God is. That is who God is, and that is what inspires the ancient and always true testimony that we took up today from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. He is our help and our salvation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad. So my friends, this day, Let us raise our hosannas loudly as we turn from our rock-strewn nests to follow Jesus into new life in Jerusalem and everywhere beyond it. Amen. Amen. This time I invite you to join in our hymn of response.
Let us rise in body or spirit to sing. It's from the faith we sing. Yes. I don't Two. know. 2111? 2111. There we go. This meal represents for us the triumph of God's love over the, all that diminishes that which is good and sacred in the world around us. This is Christ's table, and my friends, all are welcomed here. All who long to see new life flourish are invited at this table. It is our practice that when we come to this table, we come in a spirit of prayer. And we begin with a prayer of confession that acknowledges all the ways that we have nurtured that which is not God and God's way in the world. But we pray it in the confidence, like Hosanna, save us, in the confidence of one whose forgiveness and deliverance is assured. So my friends, let us be in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, you are the one who brings forth life again and again. Out of eggs and rocks and death and nothingness alike, you are the one who bears new life. Help us to be people who witness to your life-giving ways. Forgive us when we turn away from them. 
Forgive us for all the ways we entrust ourselves to laws and rulers who do not seek the well-being and wholeness of all people. As if such rules and rulers can save us or protect us. As if they are for us in the same way that you are for us. Forgive us when we give up trying to seek greater justice and flourishing for others because we have found our own comfort. Lord, have mercy. Set us free by your love and grace to serve others more fully. Breathe new life into us. Come again for our hearts long to welcome you anew with palm branches and glad songs. Amen. Friends, we are confident in our prayer and our praise and confession, trusting that the once rejected one has become the cornerstone. Our help and salvation is in Christ, the Son of David, the Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He who is hope for us all. Hear this good news again today. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. As people forgiven and freed and reconciled, I invite you to share peace with those nearest you. My friends, the peace of Christ be with you. We rejoice with glad thanksgiving as we come to receive God's grace again in this holy meal. We give thanks and pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, holy God, the mother hen whose outstretched wings have covered the generations of faithful. Cover us. Womb of life, birth us anew. Living spirit, speak your wisdom now as you always have. Speaking through teachers and prophets, healers and saints, disciples of every kind. Though we turn away, choosing the empty promises of rocks and tombs, you are steadfast, bearing new life through instruction and covenant by water and the spirit and resurrection. We praise you with glad hosannas, joining all of creation in the endless hymn of praise. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who emptied himself into human form to guide us back to you. Through his teaching and his actions, he demonstrated that the time had come when you would save your people. 
When he processed into Jerusalem on a donkey, the people gathered and cried, Hosanna, save us, because they recognized your salvific love in the flesh. And as the enthusiasm of Hosanna began to dim in the shadow of plots to crucify him, Jesus did not waver in the love and the grace he extended to all people. In one of his final gracious and loving acts on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. He broke it and shared it with all who are at the table saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and likewise he gave thanks and he blessed it and he poured it out for those who are with him. Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many in the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice, in union with Christ's sacrifice for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and all who will receive them this day. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, the rejected stone who is the cornerstone of our salvation, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed. Help us to nourish eggs instead of rocks so that we might participate with your promise of resurrection life. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until that day when Christ comes in final victory and the kingdom of God is revealed in full. And we, together with the fullness of creation, will share this holy meal once more. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. we pray together as a community of Christ, I invite those who are serving to come forward. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, this is the bread of life broken, given for you. This is the cup of salvation, forgiveness, and liberation poured out freely for us all. Broken and poured out, yet God raised them again in resurrection. May we, redeemed, may we be redeemed by them anew this day. Amen. Bread of life for you, Mike. Soup, bread of life for you. Cap, bread of life for you. Cup of salvation for you. Cup of salvation poured out for you. Christ's cup of salvation. Cup of salvation for you.
Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this meal in which you've given yourself to us once more. Help us to be those who offer ourselves to the well-being of others. For we long not only to cry out to you, but to follow in your life-giving ways. Amen. This time we offer our gifts to God, not because we can ever give back to God for all that God's mercy and forgiveness have given to us, but because we are people transformed by that mercy and forgiveness God has worked in us and long to transform the world around us and how we serve it and how we give of ourselves. And so, my friends, as we give our prayers and our gifts this day, we remember that the whole of our lives and how it is we show up in love and redemption and freedom and a witness of good news and new life, these are all our gifts back to God. So let us give and live generously this day and always. Would our ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Lord, as Jim played, we know the song that you had to walk the lonesome valley. And we offer these gifts back to you because we are transformed by the gift of your service and your witness of going into spaces of suffering and sacrifice and trusting, trusting that new life can await on the other side. So let these gifts go to bring forth and witness new life in our creation, in our world, in our communities, everywhere where anyone believes they have met a dead end. All this we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated, but I invite you to stay in a spirit of prayer. Linda Heaster reminds us this day as we head into Holy Week to remember those who are not able to be with us in person. We give thanks for those able to connect with us online, but those who are separated from us but never apart from us in love, we remember those members in our midst. And there will be cards in the fellowship hall to remember them as well. Lord, in your mercy. 
Donna Rice offers a prayer for her daughter, uh, Laura. She returned from a trip. I'm not sure I'm understanding. A trip with the Verks? I did not. I'm sorry if I didn't. Virus. I'm sorry. I, it does say virus. My apologies. We pray for Laura. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And a prayer for Lynn Jones, who is uh, in the hospital with kidney, with severe kidney problems and from the uh, virus as well. Lord, in your mercy. A prayer for all those who are weathering devastating storms around our nation and around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Nancy Lombard raises a prayer for the family of Mark Judy, who passed away this week, for his family and all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. And Carol Brown raises a prayer for his sister and family for the death of her son and their nephew. Lord, in your mercy. And as referenced earlier, for those who are impacted by gun violence, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. we desire to worship and obey and on this palm sunday as we head into holy week we remember too how the crowd that sang it's glad hosanna by the end of the week the cry will change to one of crucify and lord we remember in our own selves though we don't often like to admit it Sometimes the praise we offer when we are in this space turns too quickly when we are away from this space into cries that demean or cause harm or simply forget your presence in our midst. And so, Lord, draw us close, for we long to worship and obey. We long to live lives transformed by your relentless grace. For all the many prayers we've raised this day on our hearts, Lord, we entrust them to you. Hosanna, save us. We remember, blessed are you who come in the name of the Lord. For our world, for stories of violence and war and hatred and genocide and the harm done to the creation that still sustains us. Lord, when it all feels too big and too overwhelming, let us echo the words, Hosanna, save us trusting deliverance to come. For our nation divided, for our nation so angry, Hosanna, save us. And may our witness of people as peace, of people who would still see gladness, who would still witness to love, May that begin to transform the anger and hatred and animosity between us. May it begin in our communities and in our families and in our own hearts and lives. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Hosanna, save us. Amen.
invite you to join in our closing song, The King of Glory Comes, number 2091, and on the screen. Let us rise in body or spirit. But may these words of honoring, remembering the kingdom way of God be what send us out into the world, that we would live according to that kingdom way. Let us rise and sing. ends too soon for me. But my friends, may our rejoicing in the King of glory who comes not end too quickly this holy week. May it lead us all the way through until we gather again in worship and praise, remembering that ours is a God who can somehow bring forth new life out of eggs and rocks and every single one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>